GCSE Economics video with me, Mr. Goff, for MrGoff.com. Today's video will focus on monetary policy. Monetary policy aims to control the supply of money in the economy. The primary tool used to do this is interest rates. The United Kingdom has recently seen a large increase in interest rate after a sustained period of very low interest rates with interest below 1%. However, as you can see from this chart, these current levels of interest are not unprecedented in the UK. In the UK, monetary policy is the purview of the Monetary Policy Committee, sometimes called the MPC for short. The Monetary Policy Committee is made up of nine members. The Governor of the Bank of England, three Deputy Governors for Monetary Policy, Financial Stability and Markets and Banking, and the Bank's Chief Economist. The other four members are external members appointed directly by the Chancellor of the Government of the day. The Monetary Policy Committee take quarterly decisions about interest rates. The Bank of England's primary monetary policy objective is to maintain price stability within the United Kingdom. Subject to that, they must also support the economic policies of Her Majesty's Government, including its objectives for economic growth and low unemployment. The target for inflation is 2% with a margin of error of 1%. That means the Bank of England is happy if inflation is between 1% and 3%. The Monetary Policy Committee make changes to the base rate of interest. This is the rate of interest at which the Bank of England will loan money to commercial banks. Commercial banks then offer rates on deposits and loans that move in line with these rates. For instance, they'll offer slightly less on deposits and they'll charge slightly more on loans. This is part of the way that banks make their money. When the Bank of England increases the base rate, banks follow suit and they increase their rates for lending. This means people are less likely to borrow money to finance spending. At the same time, people who have variable rate mortgages will find that they've got to pay more and they have less money, so they have less to spend. This reduction in demand will help reduce demand pull inflation. This also means lower demand for imports, helping the government to meet one of its other targets of a better balance of trade. If the Bank of England decreases the base rate, now, Commercial banks will lower their rates. This means that more people will be willing to fund spending by taking a loan, which will cost less. At the same time, people who have mortgages are paying less each month and have more to be able to spend. This increase in spending means there's more output needed, and this leads to greater economic growth. In order to produce the additional output, more workers are required, leading to a decrease in unemployment one of the government's other goals. Aside from affecting the base rate of interest, the Monetary Policy Committee can also use quantitative easing to affect the general level of interest. Quantitative easing is where the Bank of England buys bonds, mostly from the government, using newly created digital money. This in effect means there is more money in the economy, which helps to keep interest rates low and promotes growth and employment. After the 2009 financial crisis, and then again at the start of the pandemic, the Monetary Policy Committee was able to use quantitative easing in order to promote growth and employment at a time where interest rates were already so low that they weren't really able to do so by using interest rates alone. Quantitative tightening happens when the Bank of England sells bonds to commercial investors or doesn't reinvest funds from maturing bonds. This in effect means there is less money in the economy and has the effect of raising interest rates and lowering inflation. Both quantitative easing and quantitative tightening are more effective when the markets are stressed. This is why the Bank of England generally uses changes to the base rate and only uses quantitative easing in extreme times like the 2009 financial crisis and the pandemic. That brings us to the end of this introductory look at monetary policy. Join me again in the next video when I'll take a deeper look at the effects of monetary policy on price stability, economic growth and unemployment. 
Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise economics. And until next time, it's bye for now.